Hello everybody and welcome to the Online Sociologist. My name is Ryan. To start this video, I want us to meet Rachel Dolezal. While some of you might recognize the name, it would be helpful to do a brief overview of who she is and the controversy surrounding her. In early 2015, Dolezal was an artist, activist, writer, and taught numerous courses on African American history and struggles for Eastern Washington University. Furthermore, Dolezal was the president of the Spokane, Washington chapter of the NAACP. Up until that point, Dolezal identified herself as black. All of her art, writing, and scholarship revolved around African American issues. She also sought out a college degree from Howard University, one of the preeminent historically black universities located in Washington, D.C. Now, while interest in alma mater doesn't racially categorize anybody, there are other claims. Dolezal identified Albert Wilkerson, an African-American male, as her father. Furthermore, she had a long history of claiming that she had been discriminated against because of her race. This included several reports to local news stations that she had been the victim of discrimination, received racist hate mail, and even found a noose that was placed on her porch. In 2015, Dolezal's narrative, though, began to crumble as more people began to investigate her claims that she was black. This started with a 2014 application where Dolezal was selected to be part of the Police Ombudsman Commission in Spokane, Washington, and listed numerous ethnicities on the application, including African American. Another inciting incident was Dolezal's interaction with a local news reporter who asked her multiple times if she was in fact African American and whether or not Wilkerson was in fact her father. Dolezal refused to answer the questions and walked away. This was capped with a news article written by Jeff Sale and Maureen Dolan about Dolezal entitled Black Like Me for the Cord d'Alene Press that outlined Dolezal's claim about her racial identity and questioning the veracity of her discrimination allegations. As the story grew from a local affair into a national sensation, more information came out against Dolezal, particularly from family members. First off, it was revealed that Dolezal was born in 1977 in Lincoln County, Montana to Ruth Ann and Larry Dolezal, who were both white. Her parents also disputed many of their daughter's claims. These included claims that she was born and raised in a teepee, that she lived for a time in South Africa, and that she was abused as a child. Her brother also noted that in 2011, she began using products to darken her skin and also perming her hair to give legitimacy to her claims of being black. These revelations spawned a great deal of controversy throughout the nation, particularly as it pertains to race as a social category and how it is socially constructed, as well as how identity in general is constructed. However, there were also claims that Dolezal is guilty of blackface, racial appropriation, and using this to benefit herself. This is especially true as Dolezal began selling things like calendars of herself, autobiographies, and children's books after the controversy surrounding her racial identity had passed. While these latter issues of appropriation are no doubt important, they will be gone over in future videos. However, this particular video will use the controversy surrounding Dolezal to highlight the importance of identity and the importance of the distinction between self-identity and social identity. But before getting into this, I want to invite you to like and subscribe to The Online Sociologist if you want to see more content related to the world of sociology and how it can be applied not only in the classroom, but in your everyday lives. The concept of identity is important to many social scientists and can be applied to both individuals and groups. It is primarily defined as the characteristics that relate to who the person or group is and what is meaningful to them. There are numerous sources of identity that one can have, some of which can stem from the socially constructed nature of social categories studied by sociologists. These include, but are not limited to, race, class, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, religious orientation, and nationality. Furthermore, identities can also stem from the roles and statuses surrounding one's occupation, interests, hobbies, and tastes. Now, it should be noted that one can have numerous identities that interact and shape each other. Also, some identities can be more prominently displayed than others. The larger concept of identity is further broken up into two different types of identity, which are self-identity 
and social identity. Self-identity is a process that is shaped by and through the individual. It is a process of self-development and in relationship to one's social environment that provides a sense of self. In short, self-identity is a story that you tell about yourself, about who you are, and what is important to you. To Dolezal, her self-identity was structured through race, and more particularly, seeing herself as African American. In fact, in an interview with the Guardian newspaper in 2015, she states the following, and here I quote, For me, how I feel is more powerful than how I was born. I mean that not in the sense of having some easy way out. This has been a lifelong journey. This is not something that I cash in, cash out, change up, do at a convenience level, or to freak people out or to make people happy. If somebody asks me how I identify, I identify as black. Nothing about whiteness describes who I am. While Dolezal was born biologically white, her own interests in race and racial issues began seeping into how she identified herself. Moreover, she sought to correlate that self-identification with her social identification. Social identity is defined as the characteristics that are attributed to you by other people in society. In other words, social identity is based on your group membership and how others perceive those groups. It is something that you don't control because it isn't a story that you tell about who you are, but instead a story that other people tell you about who you are. While we have some control of displaying certain identifying characteristics, such as our taste in music or who our favorite sports teams are, other identifying characteristics, such as race, cannot be correlated to how we see ourselves. While Dolezal was born white, she self-identified as black. Moreover, she did all that she possibly could to get others to socially identify her as black. This included not only darkening her skin and perming her hair, but also checking certain boxes on application identifying her as black. On a final note, Differentiating between self-identity and social identity is extremely important when analyzing the identity of individuals and groups in society and their social position. A social position is defined as the identity and or position an individual or group has in that society. The social characteristics noted above and how they are identified work in placing individuals along a social hierarchy as well as providing them specific roles or expected behaviors and statuses or value based on what placement they're on. While roles and statuses will be further explored later, it should be noted that the ways in which Dolezal was identified both through herself and by others helped shape her social positioning both before she was added as white as well as after. When socially identified as a black woman, Dolezal gained a certain status as an artist, activist, writer, teacher, and finally, the president of an NAACP chapter. However, when Dolezal was socially identified as a white woman who was posing as black, she lost that status and gained a new, more negative social status, which was accompanied by a role that ranged from confused to deceitful to appropriator to exploiter. So to conclude, we looked at the concept of identity, self-identity, and social identity through the lens of the controversy surrounding the case of Rachel Dolezal. The main takeaway here is that while we may choose how we self-identify, that self-identity doesn't always correlate to one's social identity and its expectations. Furthermore, we looked at how identity, particularly social identity, relates to where individuals and groups are positioned in larger social hierarchies. So, let me know what you think of this video in the comments below and if I missed anything. I want to thank you all for watching this video and make sure to like and subscribe for more content related to the world of sociology and how it can be used not only in the classroom, but also in your everyday lives. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.